On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, I had a chance to visit Crazy Alberto down in Florida and I will give you a summary of our fishing escapades. We will have the latest on what remains of our fishing season and maybe a few reports from our correspondents from around the island, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Last week I was down in Florida with my friend Crazy Al and Andre and I'll let you know Crazy Al sure does live up to his reputation. In my time down south I believe we caught 18 different types of species, covered over 1,000 miles throughout the state and some of the highlights had to be going offshore for amberjacks, catching a goliath grouper which is comparable to a blackfish on steroids, stalking rare clown knife fish and hitting the peacock bass holes. The weather was great and it was a great trip to do what I love. For those who have not experienced some Florida fishing over the winter, I suggest you give it a try. Now that it's winter, you may have some tog that you recently caught. Why not blackfish chowder? Just a reminder that last year, Jenna Lombardo had a great recipe, perfect for this time of the year. Click on the card or check out the link in this video's description. Many boats are being pulled out of the water right now, but if you still have one in or you get the urge to hop on a party boat or a charter boat, I'll let you know Montauk still has a good bite of tog, sea bass, and cod in about 100 feet of water. Remember, this is the last week of tog fishing as it closes on the 22nd. The South Shore wrecks and reefs are still producing tog, but the bite has slowed a little bit. I did hear of the Western reefs having fish up to 10 pounds. I also got word that the herring moved in on the North Shore harbors too. Toward the city reaches the East River and Throgs Neck area, along with the West End had shots at stripers. Remember, the striper season is closed for those who want to keep a fish, but you still may catch them and release. Next week, we will have the final standings in the Dreamboat and Kayak contests. So be sure to check out next week's weekly video fishing forecast right here, or check out the January digital issue that will be out on Monday, and we'll also have the big 2022 buyer's guide in there. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen has the outlook for the weekend. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast. And uh, again, always check your favorite apps, favorite websites, uh, whatever you have. This is a general overview, general heads up on the upcoming weekend. Let's see what's going on. Water temps, 40s, 50s, kind of staying where they've been, and, you know, kind of above normal for this time of year as well. It's been kind of a warm fall. Two to four on Saturday, there'll be some rain coming down. It's not going to be a pretty day, but Looks like the wind generally east, it won't be very strong, but uh, gusty winds start to kick in on Sunday from the north-northwest. It'll chop things up, especially offshore. Again, some rain Saturday, it looks like more of an east-northeast, uh, 5 to 15. I don't see gusty, gusty winds on Saturday. And again, you'll have to deal with some rainfall. And then Sunday, it looks like if things clear out, but the winds go northwest about 15 to 25, and that's going to uh, kick things up quite a bit. High tides, full moon now this weekend, north shore, south shore. And let's check the uh, high temps, uh, 40s on Saturday, and then uh, even colder on Sunday with some low 40s. Let's check the Guru, see what we got going on here. Saturday, you know, confirming that we've got light east-southeast breeze all day. Again, it's not going to be too windy, but we do have the rain shown down here. And then here's your Sunday, and again, a lot of colors on here. Big northwest breeze, 20 to 30, so that's going to kick things up. So it looks like, you know, if I had to pick maybe Saturday, if we can deal with the rain, the wind won't be too bad. Still a little time left in the season. Enjoy. Be safe as always. Matt, back to you. Now let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody. Uh, holidays are rapidly approaching. Hope everybody's got their gifts for all their uh, fishing friends and family in order. Um, still going strong out here in Montauk. Uh, fishing's actually really riding out, and it's finishing in a very strong way. Um, I was down on the beach Sunday morning. I saw a little pot of bass working its way down the beach, which was a really pleasant surprise. Um, unfortunately, I had somewhere to go, so I didn't, wasn't able to grab my surf rod and get down there and really take advantage of it. But I think that's probably going to just about do it for the surf fishing out here. Um, in regards to black fishing, sea bass, cod fishing, porgy fishing, uh, still going strong. It's finishing really well. Um, Dave Marmino, the captain of the Viking Star, he was telling me on Tuesday they had plenty of large porgies, plenty of sea bass, a couple codfish mixed in, and I believe some pollock, he said. Um, Paul Bruno on the Elizabeth II, he was telling me the last couple days fishing's been excellent. 
outside of a couple days where he's really had to work and look for him and try a few spots, but he's basically been limited out on blackfish every time. So I have some nice pictures from Paul. Um, uh, little Steven on the five star, he was going fishing today on Wednesday, so I might have a report on that next week. Uh, I was talking to him pretty extensively. Those guys are going to keep fishing right into the new year. Um, they're hoping to get a little bit of a cod season going this year. So uh, pay attention to their website. See what's going on. Um, fishing's really good. Jamie on the Miss Montauk, they're doing really good right now, too. They're still catching fish. They're doing mixed sea bass, cod, and blackfish. Uh, the Miss Montauk is limiting to 30 people. So it's really a nice, enjoyable day on the water. All right. All these boats are by reservation only. So get on their website and check it out. Everybody... I'll talk to you next week. Matt, I'll get it back to you now. Thank you. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Mike. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Well, <laughs> the day has come. Uh, filming this on the 15th, last day of striped bass season. Uh, really had, a, had an amazing season. Uh, can still play catch and release with the holdovers and, you know, small resident fish. Um, I mean, most of us do catch and release, you know, all throughout the season. Um, I definitely think that the bays are the better spot to... You know, if you are going to put some time in to do that, although there could still be a couple of small stragglers off the beach. Uh, plenty of wreck, wreck trips on a lot of the headboats between Sheepshead Bay and Montauk. So that's also an idea to get that cooler full and the freezer full of some tasty cod, sea bass, and blackfish fillets. And uh, like I mentioned last week, the off season is the time to, you know, really focus on your gear, on maintenance, on, you know, swapping out, you know, new trebles, split rings, swapping out the second treble on the back to an inline hook or just to swash on there, um, you know, really goes a long way. I mean, unfortunately, we're in that kind of predicament again of, you know, what's going on with the bass. We've had some tough spawning years, um, you know, so just thinking about that mortality of the fish that a lot of times the two treble hooks, three treble hooks in some cases can cause, that single tail hook definitely makes a difference. Um, and just your gear in general, uh, one thing that I always have to remind myself about is loosening the drags on, on all my rods. I just totally forget. I remember to rinse them off, but I really remember to loosen up the drags and really no reason to have them uh, tightened up for, for the off season while all this stuff takes a nap until the spring. So that's uh, something to, to keep in mind. Um, anyone needs any guidance on you know what boats are going out on trips, don't hesitate to hit me up. Leave something in the comments below. You can go onto the Fisherman website and, uh, you know, coming up on Christmas, hopefully the Santa's going to leave some nice fishing gear under the tree for everyone. Okay, until next week, I'll talk to you then. Back to you, Matt. Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters has the fly and light tackle report along with a few great gift ideas for the holidays. Paul. Hello, Matt. Well, another season's come to a close. Uh, you still can fish for stripers, you just can't keep any, uh, and it's catch and release only. Uh, but it is getting cold. This is after December 15th, so it is what it is. Uh, as far as fishing goes, I have been hearing, you know, John McMurray took uh, a South Shore Salt Tim Regan out on his boat the other day, and they, they were out looking for tuna, and they found them. They couldn't get them to eat, but they did find them. It's amazing. I'm hearing tuna in 30 feet of water. Uh, Captain Brian from uh, East Rockway, he's catching stripers in his canal. It's it's crazy. It's a crazy year, all right? Uh, but freshwater scene is still going well. The Connect Quad is fishing well. Dennis and John went out there, and they did, uh, again, terrific, deep, slow nymphs. And it was the Frenchie that actually they caught a lot of fish on. Uh, as far as going up to Connecticut, most of the rivers are still high, but fishable. Uh, the Mianus is doing well, and you can also go fish the Croton system. Most of the rivers in New York are open uh, 12 months out of the year now. Just go on their website and you, you'll see all the regulations. Each river has their own regulations. Now, as far as you want to get into fly fishing or you have a friend that or a family member that wants to try saltwater fly fishing, there's, you know, you can buy kits. And most kits, the rods are okay, the reels are okay, but the lines really are not. And most kits, you're going to outgrow them. 
But Reddington actually came out with a whole series of uh, combo kits for fly fishing called the field kits. And you can get them in uh, trout, you can get them in uh, largemouth bass, you can get tropical, salmon. But here on Long Island, we got the field kit. It's from Reddington. And this is the cold water series. Here's what makes it different. The rod is very good. The reel is good. But the line, it's a premium line. It's a $100 line. These kids sell for less than $400. They have a, a reel that's worth $150. The rod is worth about $200. The case is worth $50. And a $100 line. You can't go wrong. You will not outgrow this. This could be your rod forever. Uh, it's a terrific for here on Long Island. Uh, we have them at River Bay Outfitters. Stop in. And to the next week, tie lines, everybody. From Northport, we have Mark McGowan from Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle, who has some great gift ideas, too. Well, this week has been such a great time to get out and do some trout fishing. If you're on the fly or you're doing some spinning, remember uh, on Long Island, different ponds or lakes that you can go fishing in might have um, a different uh, set of rules as another one, whereas some areas have, are only designated fly and in other areas you can do whatever you want, you know, bamboo pole it if it makes you happy. Um, great news, you know. We build so many custom rods and we do so much stuff here at the shop, whether it's service work on reels or rods, you name it, boga grips, we're famous for boga grips. We're giving back something really cool. For every 50 bucks that you spend at Cal Harbor, this is going to go right through the winter and uh, we're going to uh, stop it. We're going to have a grand uh, prize of a custom rod that we're going to do. It's going to be up to 500 bucks. It gives you a lot of different options for a custom rod, whether you're on the boat or a surf cast guy. So here how it is. You come in, whether it's service work, hats, apparel, anything, it doesn't matter. Buying uh, uh, brand new reels, if you're getting a custom rod, for every 50 bucks you spend, you get a raffle ticket. And what that means is that you come, you spend uh, 50 bucks, you get one raffle ticket. You buy something that costs $200, you get four raffle tickets. And you get as many raffle tickets as you can accumulate. And then we're gonna do this drawing April 1st. We're gonna have a little fun shop thing going on, some nice sales. We're gonna do this raffle, a live raffle. And then uh, whoever wins, you know, you'll get in touch with us within like 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever it is, something simple. We're gonna make you an awesome custom rod. And that's just like gives away so much. So come on down. It's for everything that we sell in the shop, whether it's service or hard goods. I hope to see you here. It's such a great thing. And thanks to everyone who keeps coming down and helping support our family business. Uh, we love you and uh, we really love to give back. And remember, uh, even on top of this, you still get your customer loyalty points. So for every 200 points you uh, you spend, uh, you your $200, you get 10 bucks back in store credit plus raffle tickets. So there's always constant giveaways on top of our fantastic prices. And I, I think it's what makes people so happy. And listen, if you have a loved one who loves fishing, you don't know what to get them. We do loads of these. It's the Cal Harbor gift certificate. We put you in the book. There's no plastic, there's no fees. You use this for whatever you want. Sometimes people say, hey, tell a family member, get me a few. They put it towards a custom rod and reel, whatever you like, your money's great at Cal Harbor. We love servicing our customers. Until next week, we bid you all peace and tight lines. Raul Ortiz, the urban angler, has this report from the Western Sound and South Shore. I'm um, here with my report. Just want to say uh, fishing is still lock and load pretty much with schoolies. Uh, fished the uh, Western Long Island Sound for a bit, uh, a few times. Uh, still a lot of fish around. Um, most fish are schoolie size, anywhere from 20 to slot size. And I fished yesterday right here, closing of the season, right here in the East River. Pretty much lock and load. Birds working at night here. And uh, just pretty good fishing. Um, but time is winding down now and uh, season's closed today. Don't forget, if you, if you like to still fish during the off season, uh, you can still catch and release. Um, anyway, tight lines everybody, happy holidays, and uh, back to you Matt.
Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. Remember to shop local this season and visit your tackle shop for the angler in your life. If you like what you've been seeing here on our YouTube channel, please like our video, subscribe to our YouTube and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And please subscribe to the Fisherman Magazine, which by the way is a great holiday gift for the angler in your life. We'll see you right here next week at thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.